to Tech Me Out. Today we're going to be taking a look at third party keyboards on iOS 8. So as many of you know, with the recent release of iOS 8 came the option to add third party keyboards, a long, long awaited and overdue feature. But nonetheless, in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to install third party keyboards as well as which ones I like and which ones I don't like that are currently offered now. So the first thing I'm going to show you is a nice place where you can find a couple of keyboards, which is basically in the app store. So when you hop in here and you select on this option under the feature tab called extend your apps you can see some categories and one of those categories being add new keyboards you can then select see all and get a decent selection of keyboards to choose from some of which are free and some of which are paid but in this video hopefully I can help you kind of rule down which ones you might want to potentially download but nonetheless when you find the particular keyboard that you want and you then want to install it you're then going to go into your settings and from within your settings you're going to select general then you're going to go down a little bit tap on keyboard and then you're going to tap on keyboards up here and then select the option add new keyboard so in this area you'll find third-party keyboards and then you can tap on that particular keyboard you want but the last step because it does not end there you then have to tap on that particular keyboard and make sure you turn on the option for allow full access if this option is not on then more than likely that keyboard will not work so as you can see I do have a couple that I'm going to review with all of you today so let's go ahead and get started on that so to select the keyboard that you want you're going to hold down your globe here in the bottom left left hand corner and then slide over the one that you want to use. So the first one I'm going to review with you is FlexKey. Now this one was on Android and is basically a gesture based keyboard. So a lot of the actions that you can do are gesture based. Now it does a decent job in determining what you want to write. So I'm going to write this is a test. And as you can see, I've already messed up actually. But a cool feature about this particular keyboard is that you can just swipe back over the keyboard, like swipe to the left, and it deletes the word that you typed. So you don't have to per se hit that X key down there to delete the word. And that's something that I really enjoy about this particular keyboard. So this is a test message. Now, as you can see, because I did misspell message incorrectly, it does give me a couple of options in terms of word predictions here. So if I want the word that is suggested over here to the right, I can just swipe down and it will let me choose that word. However, if I swipe all the way by swiping up to the left, then it'll show me the original word I typed and it will allow me to swipe up a second time for it to learn that word so I don't have to type it again. The next thing that FlexKey offers you is emojis. So you can hold down this arrow over here and it will pull up your emojis so that you can use them with this keyboard, whereas some of them don't give you this option. It does. And some of them get rid of your emojis. But I'm a heavy emoji user, so I definitely need that if I'm going to be using a third party keyboard. But nonetheless, overall, this keyboard is one of the better ones offered in the App Store as some of them don't even work. But overall, this pretty much performs as it, as it did on my Android device. I really don't have much complaints other than the fact that sometimes I feel like I personally misspell words more with, with this particular keyboard. And then there's a learning curve with those swipe actions in terms of better optimizing how you use this keyboard if you like to type fast and that type of thing. So this next keyboard I'm going to be showing all of you is called SwiftKey. Now, SwiftKey is one of my favorite keyboards because to me, it's more of the polished one. This is the best one, in my personal opinion, to use on your iOS device if you're going to be using a third party keyboard at this present time, because it's to me the less buggy out of all of the ones that are currently offered. So the nice thing about SwiftKey is you can swipe over the letters like this is how to use this cool feature called and if you didn't notice when I typed the word called, you're going to go C A L and then like loop it back around and then E D. I couldn't get the word out, <laughs> but uh, that's how you choose a letter that repeats itself in a word. But the nice thing about it is if you don't like doing the whole swipe thing, you can still, you know, finger pick at the letters that you need. Now, it does a fairly good job in determining what you're trying to type. Now, to get to your emojis, if you're using SwiftKey, you're going to hit one, two, three, and then hit the Oh, I lied, I lied, I lied. 
So the thing about SwiftKey is that you don't have an emoji option. So you will sacrifice the ability to use your emojis, which is not cool in my book. So the next keyboard we're going to be taking a look at is called TouchPal. Now this particular keyboard gives you the option so that if you long press over a letter, you can get more options in terms of the character that you're going to use. So I could use the number three without ever having to hit the icon down here to get to my numbers. So that's a nice feature in terms of what this particular keyboard does. It is the most similar to the D default keyboard on your iOS device. Now, the one thing I don't like is you'll notice here if I put the um, kid or child crossed, you see it doesn't write the word up here until after the fact. So I have to write out the full word. And then if I hit space, it will then allow the word to then be up there with the sentence. So it doesn't write or it doesn't put the letter that I'm typing as I type it, which for some might not be a big deal. And honestly, for me, it's not that big of a deal right now, but I I don't know, I guess it's just something to know. Um, you'll also notice down here, you still do have access to your emojis. If you hold down on that particular icon, you will see your emojis. And instead of having pages of emojis, you can go up and down with horizontal viewing, um, basically endless scrolling of your emojis under that particular tab. So I can just, go up and down instead of swiping left and right between pages of emojis. Now that alone might be a feature that some of you like and simply want this keyboard for. So the next keyboard we have here is called Minimum. Now Minimum has, you know, gesture based like um, actions like you just saw, I deleted those words. So if I type something, I can just swipe to the left to delete. Or if I have like uh, this, I can swipe to the right to add a space is a test message. So you don't have the swipe feature here, just the action to swipe to the left to delete a word or swipe to the right to add a space. But something that's unique about Minimum is that you can slide down to get a very small keyboard. Now, I'm not going to lie to you. I, I'm not really a fan of the small keyboard. So you might notice I make a couple of errors and you will probably make a lot of errors if you try to use this keyboard because it's a learning curve to it. And I, I really haven't learned it. And I don't think I care to. I, I kind of rather have my full QWERTY keyboard. But nonetheless, for demonstration purposes, I'm going to do my best to write um, a sentence and that's going to be, let's see, how are you doing? Actually, let's delete that. D O I N G today. So that didn't work out too well. How are you Republican is what it wrote. But I think if you are willing to learn how to use an extremely small keyboard like this and learn, you know, where the placement of the letters are, it might not be too bad. But personally, I don't I don't want to learn that, <laughs> you know, so I guess I'll learn a gesture. But to kind of like learn the location of the letters all over again, that just didn't really rub me the right way. But maybe it's different for you. And you'll also notice that um, you can swipe back up to get the full size keyboard but you lose your emojis again um so i don't notice any emojis here yeah i don't think yeah there are no emojis so be willing to sacrifice that if you're going to use this particular keyboard so the next keyboard we have is qua keyboard or quay i'm honestly not sure how to pronounce it but i can tell you how to spell it but nonetheless i think this more so is designed to work in conjunction with another keyboard because you don't have a default keyboard you don't have a qwerty keyboard to actually type out a word because it basically just gives you shortcuts to things that you may need to put in without having to type it so in this particular case I put some emojis because these are some emojis that I constantly use. If I'm texting someone and I'm laughing real loud, you know, I put this one so I can just tap that and then hit use this text and it will go ahead and insert it. In addition to that, you'll notice that I have some other, you know, pre-made text here that I can just tap on and it will add it. So I don't even have to type it in. You can put long text like this so that you don't have to type it in. You just tap on it and you know, bam, it's there. It just goes ahead and adds it. You also can do that for text clips, locations. If you hit that middle icon, um, you can have quick access to numbers. And then if you want to just space bar real quick or return. But as far as getting back to a normal keyboard, I have not 
discover that. And I could be overlooking something. So if I am overlooking it, forgive me, but I don't see where you would have a regular keyboard to use. So I think this is just mainly designed to go in conjunction with another keyboard. And then lastly, we have my script. So my script allows you to pretty much write the word that you're trying to say. So if I put, hey, I'm basically going to write it out with my finger. And if I want to space over to the next, I'm going to just swipe to the right, add the space bar there. How? And then space R space U. And I noticed if you like write too fast, it doesn't keep up with you. But if you swipe to the left, it will delete what you're trying to write or what you wrote. You don't have emojis with this one either. And as you see, if I write the smiley face, it doesn't know what the heck I'm writing. So you would sacrifice emojis here as well. Now for certain keyboards, you'll also notice that they install an application. So you have more options for them. I'm not going to jump into those options. I'm going to leave that for you to play with. But for the most part, those are the keyboards I have installed. Now my picks, the ones that I enjoy the most. So the keyboards that I like the most are SwiftKey. SwiftKey, I really enjoy, but you lose that emoji option. Then I enjoy FlexKey, except I feel like its autocorrect function is a little eh. And after that, I probably would put, um, I don't know. After that, I don't know what I would choose because the rest are kind of sloppy. I think, you know, with the release of iOS 8 and these keyboards, a lot of developers are still trying to play catch up and getting the keyboards where they need to be. But if I'm going to download one, I would definitely check out SwiftKey and FlexKey. The rest of them, uh, hit me back after updates come out. <laughs> but other than that, everyone, that sums everything up. I hope this video was helpful to all of you in terms of which keyboards to download and check out. If you have any further questions, drop it down below. If you enjoyed the video, you already know what to do. And as always, thanks for taking the time out to let me tech you out.